Hello, here is Paco. Welcome to Learning with Leaders today with Adam Gray, co-founder co -founder at DLA Ignite. Um, he will be talking about a lot of things, uh, amongst others, um, why you should have a clear roadmap and a purpose in what you're doing. Uh, again, not only uh, related to young professionals, and also why your own personal beliefs should not limit your success. I mean, some people out there are so successful, even though not being the best, and why JK Rowling is playing a role in that. Enjoy. Good morning, Adam. Nice to have you with me here today. Thanks, Pekka. Thank you. So before we start, um, I will try, I will try to introduce yourself briefly, um, looking uh, at your um, LinkedIn profile and also taking account the conversations uh, we had uh, during the past years. So what I understood is that you have a big passion for music. Um, you still have, although let's say the, the instrument slightly changed. When you uh, studied uh, in, in the very beginning of your career, um, the violin, uh, you thought, and that was your dream and your ambition, that you would uh, love to play in front of a, of a big audience. And uh, nowadays, it's more the guitar you play for fun. Uh, why was it really the violin? Um, you wrote in your LinkedIn profile that it was due to an injury, but also to a lack of talent, you admit it. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. In brackets. I will, I will ask you a question a little later uh, regarding this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, after uh, this, um, let's say, start into the music career, you changed um, perspective, perspectives and you were very much into, you know, different marketing uh, roles. You worked uh, in the B2C, in the B2B world. And the five last years, you were very focused together with Tim, your partner uh, in DLA Ignite. Is that somehow correct? Uh, what I just tried to resume. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and and uh, Tim and I met when we were both working at a large corporate, and there was a reshuffle at the corporate, and we got the opportunity basically for they to them to fund the the launch of our business. And we thought, well, we're not going to get a better opportunity than this to actually go out there and and make a difference. So uh, so we set up with that in mind. So working with a friend that sounds like. A great opportunity. Yeah, I, to to be honest, we spend as much time laughing as we do working, and and that makes it great. And and all of the people that we've been fortunate enough to work with, uh, clients, suppliers, colleagues, um, you know, we, we we said to one another because because we often travel to places, obviously not during COVID, often to tra travel to places, and we'll be sitting in an Airbnb on the other side of the world chatting about stuff and and, and just laugh and say, this is not work, is it? You know, we, we <laughs> so enjoy this. And you know, going home to our our respective uh, wives, and and kind of just saying it, it's can't believe that we get paid to do what it is that we do. It's such good fun. That resonates somewhere with me as well. Yeah, I, I agree. So let me come back to that. Uh, let's say warm up question I already mm. uh, mentioned in the very beginning. So um, lack of talent, and there I all. Always, I mean, when I still did training uh, some uh, years ago, um, I always, you know, tried to ask the participants in in my trainings, where do you see the attitude in all of that? And by the way, as a fun fact, I mean, you surely know that is when you have the alphabet and you put a one into a, a two for B, and then you do that for the word attitude to get you get one hundred. You know when you add up all those oh, right. figures, yeah. So I mean, what is there? You know, when you think back, um, always also having in, in mind young professionals and what you could share for them is where do you see the connection between lack of talent and attitude? Um, well, I, I think you need to do the best that you can do. I think that the the problem with going from uh, amateur to professional in any area and certainly my experience of this was um, I was one of the best violinists I knew uh, so I played at school I played at local orchestras I gave local concerts 
uh, and I was recognised as being quite talented. And then I went to one of the top conservatoires in the world and I was surrounded by people that were monstrously talented. So, you know, this is like playing in your local football team and then going and, and trying out for Bayern Munich. And then you wonder why you're not fast enough and you can't kick the ball accurately enough and you haven't got enough stamina because things have just moved up to the next level. And, and I think that that's a real, uh, a, a real sobering experience for people and, uh, and, and, and an important one. Because, you know, ultimately you, 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 you set up your, your, your life with a dream. Sometimes you can achieve the dream. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes being OK at something is good enough. And sometimes it mm -hmm. isn't. Sometimes you have to be the best at something. And I think that, that as we find our journey through life, we need to recognise that the fact that you can't do this thing that you thought was really important, you have to do something else, is often quite good because you're still the same person. You know, it hasn't devalued you because I'm not the best violinist in the world. It doesn't make me less of a person. Mm -hmm. and, and acknowledging that and saying, you know, for all of our strengths and weaknesses, our, our, our bits that are perfect and our flaws, uh, we're still the same people. And, and you have to work out what makes you happy, how you can mm -hmm. find your, your, your place. Um, and I think so much of success throughout our careers um, is, is based on on getting to a place of contentment in these things and uh, uh yeah and, and and certainly when i was when i was young I, I had to be the best at everything uh i had to have a ferrari i had to have a huge house as i've got older i've realized none of that matters what matters mm. is do i enjoy what i do do i dread monday mornings and if i do you you're doing the wrong thing am i surrounded by people that i like working with and do i feel that i'm making a difference and, and those are things that are really important. And those are things about how I engage with the environment I'm in and any legacy that I'll leave behind. You know, if I've got one Ferrari in the garage or 10, it doesn't matter really, does it? I agree. I agree. Although if it's a red Ferrari, but OK, let, that's another topic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very much, Adam. Um, so let's see, I mean, um, when I think back um, in, in, in my career, I received little coaching, little good coaching, little good um, conscious coaching. I had some very um, knowledgeable and um, professional colleagues and, and bosses. Um, but my, my question for you would be, what, what was your personal most memorable coaching experience you would like to share here? Uh, well, uh, like you, uh, I, I, I never really received much in the way of coaching. And, and I think that may be, it could, could have been down to the environment I was with, in, in the people I was with, or it could have just been down to the fact that when we were young, coaching wasn't a big thing. So, so I had at a couple of points, once as a musician and once when I started my first business, um, I had people that mentored me. Mm -hmm. that, you know, as we would say in England, that, you know, they, they, they took you under their wing and they kind of showed you what they did. Now, there was no formal coaching to that, but it was quite nice just going around with one of these people, seeing how somebody that was really good at something did that. Uh, and, and I think I, I personally would have benefited enormously from being coached, from having somebody do with me what I now do with people when I coach them. Um, but, but like I said, uh, I, I guess that wasn't such a thing when we were younger. You had teachers, you had mentors, you had inspirers, but, but nobody kind of coached you and showed you how things really work and the, the tricks and what you, the skills you need to have. Um, which is a shame, but but I'm glad that that's changed now. I'm glad yes. that's changed because, you know, me in my 50s, um, I would have loved to have known 20 years ago what I know now. Even some of what I know now would have been hugely beneficial to me. Mm. And um, how rewarding is it to coach or mentor younger people? Oh, it's fantastic. It, it, it's, it's absolutely great to watch these people develop and, and 
and th and think to yourself, I, I was part of that journey. I mean, I think one of the interesting things about coaching and mentoring is that it's like teaching. <clears throat> I can't teach you anything. All I can do is show you how to learn the lessons. And that's the nice thing about about coaching. I don't, I don't help you achieve anything, but I'm kind of with you for some of the journey of you achieving it. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see people blossom and, and, and flourish and, and come to life. And, 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 and most importantly, I think, to see them really get some self-confidence and belief in their ability to do things. You know, it's there's so much of of uh, so much of <clears throat> the way we measure things in businesses around KPIs. You know, how many of this have you done? How much of that have you done? How, how much of this have you achieved? But when you see people really starting to sit up straight and believe in themselves, that's wonderful. You, you sense that change and they become much more magnetic, magnetic, much more believable, much more empowered. It's beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. I fully agree, Adam. And let's talk about that self-confidence in, in, in young professionals. How often in, in your, uh, let's say, mandates or collaborations with, with clients is a reverse coaching, you know, taking advantage of these, the energy and, and the knowledge and the passion of those younger ones? How often is that, you know, embedded in business transformation? Yeah, well, I, I think that... Uh... I think, I mean, I personally, on that, on that subject, I, I get a huge amount out of coaching people. Um, and, and you know, so, so often, and I, I'm not myself an addict, but I, I from what I understand about dealing with addiction, you know, there are various stages that you have to go through, the first of which is acknowledging you have a problem, and then you have to learn and put in place strategies and change habits. But the thing that is the determining factor about whether or not you stay clean is whether or not you mentor somebody else through the process and it's it's and and as a mentor for for business with people i see such a massive parallel because so often you're telling somebody this is this is how it works these are the things you need to be careful of and then you think uh yeah that's exactly the mistake that i'm making I might be 30 years older than you. I might have more experience. I might have been through this process many times, but actually in a lot of ways, I'm still making the same mistakes. And it's only when I try to pass that on to you that that, that really resonates with me and, and I can start to make that change as well. So, uh, so yeah, the reverse mentoring thing is, is, is really interesting. But, but yeah, the, the, the business transformation side and the, the making a, a real impact within an organization and, and within individuals. I think so much of this is, is around giving a clear, a clear roadmap. So first of all, what's your dream? What are you trying to achieve? Either you as an individual or you as an organization. Purpose. <laughs> yeah. What, and what, what's your, what's your part in that purpose, that, that change within the organization? What, what's your part on that journey? And then recognizing that we are all, human no, no one is infallible so i've shown you what you need to do and that's more of a training thing than a coaching thing i've shown you what you need to do you know what you need to do you've gone away and you've not done it now either we can bang the table and say that's not good enough but i think we need to recognize that that behavioral change within people is is a really difficult thing for people to achieve And, you know, I often say this flippantly, but <clears throat> uh, if you want to get fit and get thin, you need to eat less and you need to walk more. It's not rocket science. Anybody can do that. However, fitness and personal training are multi-billion dollar industries because it's not that easy. At a conceptual level, at an abstract level, it's easy. Well, I just have a smaller portion And I'll walk to the station rather than drive. But what actually happens is I don't do those things. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's, uh, I guess that that helping acknowledge that people need that constant support. And some people get it really quickly and some people don't. For some people, it's a, a difficult process, this process of change. And it's a process where they need constant reminding and constant support. You know, the, the biggest challenge, and, and, and we spoke about this briefly, you know, you being a, 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 a learning expert, 
uh, this idea of self-limiting beliefs. You know, oh, I don't think I can do that. And, and in what we do, so often people think, I haven't got something to say that the world wants to hear. Uh, I'm, I'm not good at writing things. Um, I'm not uh, a, I'm not an expert in this particular topic or, or not expert enough to really feel that I have the right to express an opinion. And all of that is is smoke and mirrors. You know, the most successful writers are not necessarily the best writers. You know, J.K. Rowling has sold more books than William Shakespeare. Is she a better writer? No, that isn't the point, though. And 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 so much of the value that we bring as organizations, as individuals, um, the value that we bring is how much can we facilitate change in others and other organizations and get them to be better at what it is that they do. So you don't have to be the best. And what you have to be is a the best you can be and and effective in terms of getting the people around you to take action, I think. Yeah. So getting now, um, I mean, from a pretty strategic level, a little bit more into the uh, let's say um, nitty gritty micro mm -hmm. levels of of social media and social selling as well. Um, what is your view on how much um, a young professional uh, who has been raised uh, and been confronted all his or her life with social media, how many personal details should they disclose <laughs> in their you know professional environment? Uh, well, it, it is my belief, uh, all of them, uh, and and th this is not about oversharing, because there are some things that you might share which might make people feel uncomfortable. Uh, but but this is about bringing the whole you to work. Now, whatever your role within the corporate world, uh, there is the old saying: people by people. You know, if you're in sales. The first, the, the, the ultimate goal when you're engaging with someone that might buy from you is to get that person out for dinner or to get them to a football match or to get them on a, a, a an adventure day somewhere. And it's got nothing to do with work. It's got to do with bonding and getting to know that person. And building that rapport is crucial to building the relationship with that person. So the more of yourself that you share, maybe, maybe you're a passionate mountain biker or maybe you like skydiving or maybe you like travel or scuba diving or music or whatever. The more of these things that you put into your narrative, the more likely you are to find something that people are, themselves are passionate about. I, I'm, mm. I'm thinking I might want to buy from you. You collect old Ferraris. Wow. I've always wanted an old Ferrari. It would be great if we can get together. You know, all of a sudden we're friends. We've got something that we can bond about. And I think that that certainly one of the things that took me a long time to realize was that success in business and, and, and sales in particular uh, doesn't, it normally happens outside of that arena. You know, so if you get to know someone, you get to like someone, uh, that person wants to work with you and then they'll find a way. Mm. If they don't like you or they just see you as somebody that's selling a product or, or somebody that's constantly talking about a product, it's a bit mm. one dimensional, isn't it? There's nothing there. For... Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, when we go onto social networks, we see this again and again and again. You know, we see the, this this mono uh, singular vision of of the entirety of me is my product or service that I'm selling. I'm constantly talking about this product or service. And, and you know, the, I think the key thing that we need to remember is that if we work within company X and company X makes a, a an accounting software package or whatever it might be, uh, we know loads about accounting software. The people that we're selling to don't know much about accounting software because if they did, they wouldn't buy from us. They'd build their own. So when we say our product's great because it does this one of our competitors says well our product's better because it does this and someone else says well our product's better still because it does this and it just confuses the person that's the buyer often so so much of this is made about the conversation is i've seen you on on the social networks uh i, I love the fact that you're out running and that you've got a boat that you take out in on on the river and and that makes you interesting. So I'm prepared to listen to you and trust you because I see you're a lot like me. And 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 that I think is a quite a difficult concept for young people in business to grasp that 
your success is not really predicated on how good you are at what you do. It's based on how good you are at playing the game of being a well-networked, interesting, effective individual. And mm. the two are, are there's a like a Venn diagram. There's a little bit of overlap there, but they're not the same thing at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Um, almost coming to the end of our really, really interesting conversation. I really enjoy this. Um, so normally at, um, at the end of, of this, I ask, um, what is your top tip for a young professional uh, nowadays to be uh, yeah, successful, including, of course, to like what he or she are doing? What would be your top tip? Um, I think of, of all my years in business, um, the thing that I would say is crucial is start now. Whatever it is, start now. So uh, often we find ourselves in a situation where others seem to be ahead of us on the journey. On social, maybe they've got more followers or they've got more engagement. Uh, maybe they, they've built a bigger network. Maybe they, they've been to more events. Maybe they've got more product knowledge. Maybe, it doesn't matter what it is. And we feel that we can't make up that, that distance or mm -hmm. we need to work really hard to make up that distance. The most important thing is start now. You know, you're on social, which obviously is, is my area of, of passion, uh, on social, your network is really important. You, you join LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, you've got no followers, no connections. Uh, you need to start building them. If you build, if you add 100 connections a week, every single week, you know, by this time next year, you've got 5,000 connections. 5,000 connections is great. Five connections is not great. And so, so start now. These things that you want to achieve, uh, recognize that what you do on social, what you do in terms of learning, what you do in terms of networking, not just on social, but in terms of the businesses and the sectors that you work within, the industries that you work within, the company that you work within, get to know people, build relationships with those people, get known, because that's the thing that you carry with you. So top tip, start now, whatever. Okay, so... I probably should also having in mind the summer season start now walking and not driving to the train station. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you too will be slim and fit. And, well, you already are slim and fit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adam, let's not enter this area uh, more. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, thank you very much. I really thank enjoyed the, today's conversation. It was a real pleasure. Uh, and I hope to see you again in London or elsewhere. And why not again in Chicago, where we already met once? I hope so. Thanks, Paco. Thank you, Adam. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.